Chapter 33, Mitchell Worth. The town council votes to salvage whatever Delamere family valuables they can get out of the fort. The fort itself, which they have the nerve to call the hole in the ground, gets filled with sand and permanently sealed. So much for the greatest place a bunch of guys ever got to call their own. I bet they think that's the right thing to do. They're probably breaking their arms, patting themselves on the back because they eliminated a safety hazard. Idiots. The guys are pretty upset, and who can blame us? Ricky said he practically cried when he saw the work crew heading into the woods. Ricky's one of us now. You know that new magnet school the guy wanted to go to? Well, he aced the test to get in, and then he told them to forget it. He wants to stay in school with his friends. Oh, that's us, by the way, even me. And if that seems like a dumb decision, remember that Ricky's the one who made it, and he's smart. But back to the fort, the X fort. Ricky's bummed, Evan's bummed, Jason's bummed, CJ's bummed, and so am I. The whole thing is a humongous bum fest. All those days when we got out of school and made a beeline for the woods, that's ancient history. Janelle tells us we should look for another fort. Not even Jason thinks that's a good idea. There can only ever be one fort. I'd be willing to carry a broken mirror under 13 ladders while a black cat crosses my path if we could have the fort again. Well, okay, maybe not, but what's the point of having a fort if you're dead? But y you know what I mean. Like all that's not bad enough, Mom forces me to call Dr. Breckenridge to apologize for what I did to his herb garden. It's not a very fun conversation. But he backs up what Mom said. He never dropped me as a patient. Well, then I guess I drop myself, I tell him. I'm always doing stupid things. I make bad decisions because of my OCD. You explained that to me. Well, yes, I suppose I did, he replies. And there's a long silence on the other end of the line. And then, how'd you like to come back into therapy with me? I really would. And I'm not lying, even though those therapy sessions could be kind of boring. But we lost our insurance and my mom can't pay. So he makes me an offer. I'll start seeing him again, and instead of payment, I'll work it off with odd jobs. That would be great, I exclaim. Only, what odd jobs? I'm not good at anything. Of course you are. For starters, you can take care of my herb garden. It needs to be cultivated and weeded and watered, of course, with real water this time. I'll bet his herbs are lousy from now on, CJ comments. You were the special sauce. <laughs> Don't even joke about that, Ricky says seriously. We all ate those herbs. It's after 1 a.m. and the five of us are slinking through the darkened streets for one final fort mission. We're not going to the fort because there's no such place anymore. It's all filled in and sealed up. No, we're on our way to the Canaan Municipal Dump. The city took the contents of the fort that nobody wanted and tossed it all away like it was garbage. I mean, I guess it is garbage if nobody wants it, but it'll never be garbage to us. And this is our last chance to visit the fort, or what's left of it anyway. And maybe our only chance to say goodbye. How much farther, I ask. I'm having visions of rats the size of SUVs running around the dump, probably in groups of 13. We're close, Jason replies. Can't you smell it? I'm a mouth breather, I explain. It's not my fault, it's medical. By the light of five cell phones, the dump is a terrible sight. First of all, it's huge, so how are we ever going to find what we're looking for? And plus, it's gross. I don't see any rats, which means they must be hiding. I hope they're just as scared of me as I am of them. That would be pretty hard, though. Ricky gets the idea to start searching near where the sanitation trucks are par parked. That's probably where the freshest stuff is, he explains. CJ sniffs. Well, if it's fresh you're looking for, you came to the wrong place. Two burning red eyes stare at us from the top of the pile. A rat! I exclaim in horror. Would you expect to find it a dump, Jason booms. A cocker spaniel? We're both wrong. Fat raccoon backs away, glaring at us defiantly. As usual, Ricky's instincts turned out to be pretty sharp. We haven't been looking very long when CJ spots the cow silhouetted against the moon atop a trash heap. He should know. For the longest time, that was his bed. 
Climbing on green bags like they're stepping stones, we manage to haul each other up. We pan our phone lights over the pile. It's all there, pieces of the fort. The record player, the video cassette machine, the TV where we first watch Bennett Delamere speak the words, If you're watching this, I have to conclude that I'm dead and America is under attack. Evan reaches down and comes up with an ancient can of SpaghettiOs. I'm not going to miss that, CJ admits, but it tasted pretty good in the moment. Jason displays a copy of Queen's A Night at the Opera album, clearing half a banana peel off the cardboard sleeve. The vinyl record slides out, broken into three pieces. I spy the Jaws video cassette at my sneakers, also smashed. I wanted to watch it once more, I said ruefully. Why, CJ challenges, you weren't scared enough the first five times? Well, because this time it was going to be okay, I insist, and they all laugh in my face. Well, we'll never know now, I conclude ruefully. I don't see your PlayStation, Evan tells CJ. I'll bet somebody took it. They can have it, CJ replies, tight-lipped. And we all understand. It was a gift from Marcus. And that's a part of CJ's life that he'd rather forget. We hang out a little longer, sifting through movies and music we loved, but nobody takes any souvenirs. Most of it's just busted anyway. Besides, none of us owns the right equipment to play it on. We find the chemical toilet last. Sitting on top of the closed lid is a shape none of us recognize. Five phone lights shine on Jason's cactus, the one he rescued from his parents' crumbling marriage. We goggle. The serious cactus is in full bloom. A brilliant white flower glows in the middle of all this garbage and decay, the cast-offs of our entire town. No way, Ricky exclaims. That thing only blooms once a year in the middle of the night. What are the mathematical odds that it would be happening right now? I may be the last kid anybody would ever let into a magnet school, but I think I have the answer. It has nothing to do with math, I assure him. We came here to say goodbye to the fort, and this is the fort saying goodbye to us. And for once, nobody laughs at me. And that's the end of The Fort by Gordon Corman. Um, tremendous book. Um, if you find that your life resembles in any way CJ's, um, there are resources available to help. Um, nobody should be allowed to ever put hands on you. Um, and there are people that want to help you, organizations as well. Um, so consider talking to someone at your school, a teacher, a counselor, um, principal, uh, some trusted adult um, to get help. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the book.